Hi, Dr. Plechner. We've been talking a little bit about Plechner syndrome. What treatment do you do for any animal that comes in that has your syndrome? Well, once the syndrome has been identified and the hormone imbalances uh, have also been identified, then normally a, a cortisol replacement is used, whether it's injectable until the IgAs get up to 58, along with thyroid hormone. Uh, and the interesting thing is uh, the therapy is continued on because the patient is deficient in these areas. And often, unlike uh, people sometimes with stress, uh, lack of exercise, improper nutrition, uh, the cortisol production is reduced and can come back once some of these factors are corrected. In animals, it seems to be a genetic defect that can't be corrected unless they're on ongoing uh, hormone therapy. And what people worry about is, you know, oh my gosh, I can't keep my animal on a steroid long term. We're going to have all kinds of side effects. Well, no, if your animal's been properly measured and the cortisol is defective, or inactive, uh, by removing the steroid, the original condition is going to come back. So you're going to need to continue it on. And if you're concerned about the use of long-term therapy, hormone therapy, repeat the endocrine immune blood test. If for some reason your pet begins to produce its own cortisol, the estrogen levels will drop below zero, antibodies will drop again. It's very straightforward. It's very factual. You'll see side effects, drinking more water, wanting to eat more, possibly uh, panting at night. There'll be other clinical signs that will say, hey, maybe it's time to check the levels, see if we can back off the medication. Yeah, there are cases where you can back off. It's a temporary suppression of cortisol. Uh, it's the HPA axis is what it is. Anyway, but there are times when a suppression can cause something like this, like an anesthesia. Okay, like a vaccine, like an improper diet, an enzyme deficiency. All of these things can lead to this imbalance. And if they are corrected and the imbalance is temporary, then certainly ongoing therapy is not indicated. But you can tell this by factually doing a blood test. Very simple. And the type of medication that you do give the animals, are there any long-term effects of those medications? No, I think uh, when properly medicated, there should be no long-term effects. There's no reason for any long-term effects. But I think the main thing that people have to realize, veterinarians and MDs have to realize, is that we've identified a deficiency which we're correcting. We're not superimposing a steroid on a normal steroid state, period. And in a defective situation like that, uh, an overproduction called Cushing syndrome is not going to happen because what's being produced is not being recognized by the body, the pituitary, in the negative feedback. So in backing off medications, uh, the syndrome will come back. And is it possible that you can actually drop too low on the estrogen? Well, yeah. If it, well, it's an indicator. Because your estrogen levels are a little bit too low, then you back off your cortisol and the negative feedback, and you'll get more uh, ACTH production from your pituitary, which again will cause the inner layer of adrenal to produce more estrogen. It's a balance. It's a real balance between your hormones and your immune system. And it's neat because these are all factual things that all can be measured. So each patient can be medicated totally differently. And they can weigh the same. Say a 100-pound person uh, may take two grains of thyroid with Medrol, may not. Another person may take half of that. So there is a sensitivity with all patients, whether animal or human, uh, and this has to be taken into consideration, that individual correction is the name of the game, period. And there's no blanket, uh, hang them up by their feet, weight to uh, medication ratio.